The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play, so we surfed on the web all that cold, cold, wet day. I chatted with a dove about the things I had found while on Jewkids.com just messing around. It says on this website, there's a dot on an ot. Have you heard such a thing? In my life I have not. But it's true, I have seen them. I think that there's ten. You have to believe me. I won't tell you again. I don't want to argue. For years we've been pals. But I just don't believe you. Torahs never have vowels. I won't ever believe you. Won't, 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 won't. I'll go ask the rabbi. Just see if I don't. That week after shul, we both stayed behind to ask Rabbi Goldberg to see if he'd mind showing us both the Torah and finding the place with a dot on the ot, so I wouldn't lose face. He smiled at us kindly. We don't need to look far. The first one's next week in Parshat Lech Lecha. They really are there! I cried out with joy. Yes, there's a dot on an ot, my dear girl and boy. So we each grabbed a handle, then we roll and we roll to get to the first time there are dots in the scroll. And there on the letter, there's a big blob of black. There's a dot on the yud, right there on its back. Are you really quite sure that's a dot on that ot? I just can't believe it. I think it is not. The scribe wrote a vowel there because he forgot. Or maybe the ink spilled and that's just a spot, said the rabbi. My child, it's supposed to be there. It's a dot on an ot and it's really quite rare. The scribe writes it in most deliberately. It's in all the rules, just as plain as can be. This one is the first one. It says, Uveinecha, to let God be the judge between Abraham and Sarah. So why is it there? And what does it mean? Why does a dot on an ot have to be seen? This dot on the ot teaches a lesson in life that no one should interfere between a husband and wife. Show us some more, more letters with dots. But he closed up the Torah. And he said, I cannot. We've rolled quite enough and we don't want to miss setting the place for our mincha service. If there's a dot on a knot, I'll let you take a peek. But you'll just have to come to our shul once a week There's ten to be seen, and you both need not fear. We'll cover them all in only a year. Every week at the shore, don't you think we'll get bored? Could be, said Nadal, but we'll be assured of seeing the letters with dots on their head. I guess that will come. We won't stay in bed. So that's how our rabbi got us to the shore every single Shabbat. For us was the rule, and at the end of the service, every once in a while, he'd open the Torah and give us a smile. There's one here this week, he'd tell us with pride. We'd shuffle up close, and we'd both look inside. Sometimes in a parsha, there was more than just one. It was really exciting, it was really quite fun. A love has got three dots. On the other, Yud and Rav. It means Abraham's guests are from heaven above. They are angels from God, standing three in a row. And they're asking, where's Sarah? But they already know. They're asking quite nicely and teaching us all that we should all be polite to everyone, big or small. Uva Kuma has a dot on one ot, and that one appears in the story of Lot. But our favourite of all just has to be this, on Vayishakehu, which means he gave him a kiss. Wow, we both said. Esau's up to his tricks. 
There's six dots on that word. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Esau meets Jacob after some years apart. He pretends that he loves him, but we can see in his heart the dots on the letters. Simply give him away. He just meant to bite him and then run away. In the story of Joseph, his brothers are out in Shechem. Then Jacob sends Joseph to go look for them. They were all meant to be looking after their sheep. But dots on the word et show they were drunk and asleep. The Torah is telling us to be a good Jew and not mess around when there's something to do. And then there were months without a single dot on an ot. It got so that we thought Rabbi Goldberg forgot. The Torah will be finished. And we'll never know if we saw all the dots. But we continue to go. And then all of a sudden, not just one dot, but five. It perked up our spirits. We felt so alive. He hadn't forgotten. We gave a huge clap. Between Bereshit and Bamidbar, there was just a big gap. All of the letters in the Aharon, the high priest, had a dot to show that he was a seeker of peace. I think that the answer, without any doubt, when they counted the Levites, that they left him out. Rechoka has a dot above the letter He to show that God's word is really not far away. And Asher as well has a reish with a dot to show that worshipping idols, one just does not. Visaron means a tenth with a dot on its vav. We give a tenth to Sadaka out of duty and love. And then one day it happened. We both knew it would. The rabbi called us over. By the Torah we stood. I'm afraid it's the last one. The last dot on an ot. But it's very impressive. It's the best of the lot. And he wasn't kidding. No, he really was not. There were dots everywhere. We had hit the jackpot. One, two, three, four... And then five, six, and seven. Eight, nine, and ten. It went up to eleven. We just couldn't believe it. Just count them. Eleven. Dots on each ot. We were really in heaven. Lanu Levanenu Ad has dots on all along. So God didn't punish us when we did something wrong. Because of the children. Just like both of you. I hope you'll grow up and be very good Jews. And then Rabbi Goldberg looked a bit sad. What's the matter, Rabbi? Have we been bad? No, said the Rabbi. But I guess now you're done. You won't be here next week. Perhaps you won't come. Nadab looked at me and I looked at him. And then we looked at the Rabbi and gave him a grin. We'll both still be coming. It's really been cool. We both hadn't thought we'd enjoy it at shul. But we've learnt how to pray. And we love the kiddish. We've learnt lots of Hebrew and even some Yiddish. And thanks to us finding a dot on an ot. We'd read the whole Torah. We'd read the whole lot.